Right, our top story of the day, as it is in most news outlets, whether mainstream or otherwise that you might see today, is the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's visit to the United States, his first visit outside of the country since Russia launched its military operation in Feb of this year. It's been over 300 days of conflict in Ukraine. Uh, uh, the President of Ukraine is meant to uh, meet with the top leadership in the United States, including an address that he's already made to a joint session of both houses. Uh, in that speech, he has invoked all kinds of things, including uh, comparisons with the victory against Nazi Germany in the Second World War. He's also talked about support to Ukraine being the equivalent of support for a global fight for democracy. Uh, for a wider perspective on this, as well as the reaction it might bring uh, from Russia and in the wider context of the war that is ongoing, uh, we have with us in studio Abdul Rahman of People's Dispatch. Uh, Abdul, typically strong rhetoric as you would expect uh, from someone in, in Zelensky's position at that point. Um, what do you make of the speech in general uh, in terms of its language uh, and the kind of impact that he is at least hoping it would have? Well, uh, it was quite, uh, you can say, depends how you see it. Uh, it can be assertive, it can be aggressive, it can be a kind of uh, assertion that the war will continue uh, for the uh, for the coming uh, months at least, if not years, uh, because uh, Ukrainians are not ready to uh, give up. The, uh, instead of talking about the need of peace, uh, what Zelensky was uh, mentioning was that war will continue until uh, Ukrainians are able to retake all the territories they have lost uh, to uh, Russians. Uh, he also talked about how uh, it is an investment uh, uh, by the foreign countries, particularly the US, if they uh, provide uh, Ukrainians with more weapons, provide Ukrainians with more uh, uh, money uh, uh, to basically uh, sustain the war uh, conditions. Uh, in, in a way, he basically defied all the uh, possibilities of uh, uh, kind of talks which is uh, considered to be crucial mm. to uh, revive the, uh, 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 to basically end the war. And he in fact mocked the idea of peace and he talked about how peace for Ukrainians would mean that all the territories are liberated and Russia is defeated. So this talk of aggressiveness, uh, this talk of uh, uh, kind of uh, not uh, having any uh, kind of uh, uh, dialogue with uh, Russians at this moment is basically a talk of, which basically confirms that the war as the whole world is hoping and some of the uh, countries which are also uh, uh, supporting Ukrainians so far are feeling the heat of it. Now they are trying to kind of uh, push the Ukrainians to for negotiations that pushing will not work. And uh, it has been encouraged in fact if you see how the U.S. Uh, is, uh, has placed more money, already around $1.8 billion have been placed before he yeah. uh, landed in U.S. And U.S. also uh, uh, agreed to provide patriotic uh, missiles, uh, which basically is, uh, is another uh, uh, provocation uh, in the war. So all the hopes uh, with Zelensky's visit, uh, the hopes of uh, resumption of dialogues, between the Ukrainians and uh, Russians have uh, further uh, vanished. And that is the only uh, takeaway from this visit. Uh, from a US perspective, because uh, th there's a change going to happen in the House and, and there is some talk of uh, the Republicans wanting to reduce uh, sort of aid to Ukraine. Will that be a factor in the months going forward? Or how, how, what, what do you see happening next uh, in uh, sort of diplomatic terms? Well, uh, there are, uh, if you see, uh, as far as the Russian reaction is concerned, uh, uh, there were yesterday a uh, Russian ambassador to US and today uh, 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 Russian president uh, said that this is yet another confirmation uh, uh, that uh, US is directly involved in the war uh, against Russia. Uh, so the, the claims of proxy war gets more credibility with this kind of push up, push, pushing by the US. Uh, particularly Zelensky is addressing the U.S. Congress. Uh, as far as uh, its domestic uh, 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 context is concerned, uh, th there are commentaries uh, about uh, how uh, Biden uh, sees uh, the war in Ukraine as a 
distraction from his own failures, his administration's failure in U.S. and uh, basically uh, providing the U.S. public uh, some kind of distraction uh, uh, in Ukraine, in Europe. Uh, given the fact that if you see the, the overall performance of the Biden administration on all the basic fronts, there are uh, credible questions about it. Mm. Uh, uh, Republicans taking over uh, the Congress and some of the Republicans expressing uh, uh, doubts about uh, diverting an essential amount uh, of uh, public money to the war in Ukraine, uh, hampering the U.S. economic uh, 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 scenario, U.S. economy in, many, in different ways, uh, is a serious uh, concern. We do not know at this moment whether the Republicans, those who uh, express their concerns about uh, uh, stopping the aid to Ukraine or reducing it significantly, will, we'll be will be able to prevail hmm. uh, because even Republicans uh, will see it as a possible uh, uh, sure. distraction. Hmm. Uh, also, uh, there is uh, uh, the, the way Zelensky was received both in the U.S. media and uh, by the U.S. politicians uh, is it, basically it's quite clear that uh, as uh, someone has said before, that the Americans see it as a possibility of a kind of uh, uh, cornering Russia uh, uh, in the international politics, uh, reducing the international competition uh, while using Ukrainians, the last Ukrainians, as they say. Mm. So uh, this visit basically, uh, as some of the Russian uh, newspapers have said, that this is basically a kind of confirmation of the, uh, the, the things which were said all this while uh, um, and it has nothing new to offer. Right. Uh, after doing that uh, special on Netflix with David Letterman, uh, I don't even know why <laughs> Zelensky in that sense needed to make the visit all the way to the U.S. <laughs> but uh, thanks very much for that. And while we have you, Abdul, we're going to talk about another important story, an unfortunate story, uh, news coming in from Afghanistan, uh, where the Taliban, the de facto rulers of Afghanistan at this point, have announced a decision to ban women from attending university. The decision came at a meeting shortly after high school examinations were held, in which uh, several girls, of course, uh, gave those examinations, despite having been banned from attending classroom education uh, since the Taliban took over Kabul uh, this year. Uh, Abdul, uh, along expected lines, uh, all, all, all the sort of talk of a more moderate version of the Taliban uh, ruling this time around in Afghanistan have pretty much gone out of the window. Exactly. Uh, there were uh, reports, there were, uh, in the, of course, in different uh, media about how the Taliban is not unanimous when it comes to how the, quote-unquote, their version of Islamic laws applies to women this time. It is uh, different from what it was in 1996. Uh, it also basically defies the, uh, the U.S. claims of, quote-unquote, good Taliban versus the bad Taliban. Yeah. So all those binaries which were created uh, uh, ever since U.S. started negotiating with Taliban much, uh, uh, I think, long past uh, in 2016-15 uh, to justify its basically attempts to uh, come out from uh, Afghanistan to find an excuse to uh, withdraw forces from Afghanistan, at least the physical presence in Afghanistan. It basically has been uh, uh, yet again proved uh, 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 false and uh, how uh, shallow they mm -hmm. were. Um, so uh, uh, this also basically uh, yet again uh, establishes that uh, the, the current leadership of Taliban has not moved away from their uh, uh, quote-unquote basic position about uh, how the uh, the their version of society is basically a male dominated society mm. where women are not allowed in public spaces so the uh, ba uh, barring them barring women from attending uh, universities is the latest move if we see uh, what they have done in the last uh, one year since they took over uh, power in uh, august 2021 mm. more than one year uh, they they have adopted, uh, unlike in 1996, they adopted a very gradual approach. First, they uh, uh, shut down the uh, secondary schools for women, claiming that they are basically uh, fixing some logistical issues, mm -hmm. syllabus, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. 
and they will reopen their schools in March. Th that did not happen. happen. And it, it, it's unlikely that that will happen anytime soon. soon. Uh, they also uh, gradually introduced uh, laws related to uh, banning women from public spaces, from parks, from gym, gyms, from other uh, uh, places, um, public uh, uh, swimming pools, and so on and so forth. They also introduced law. Uh, about uh, uh, women covering their uh, uh, faces uh, and kind of making uh, the complete uh, uh, veil uh, compulsory. So this is yet another move, uh, and I think uh, if it's, it's not uh, if there is not strong opposition from within, this may continue uh, further. Uh, so, on that subject of reactions or, or even uh, internal opposition building uh, from a political sense, Abdul, any reports that are coming in that indicate uh, there's a space even for people to mobilize, for women to mobilize and, and, and other organizations to get together behind it? Uh, one good thing about this that there are no uh, uh, demands for external intervention at, at, as such. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, learning from the devastating yeah. impact it has had in the past. Yeah. Uh, of course, there are uh, small-scale demonstrations which have been reported uh, from both Kabul and from other uh, parts of the country. There are uh, videos circulating on social media. Of course, the, uh, the, the, the veracity of those uh, the, uh, videos, it is not established, but it, they are claiming that uh, there are uh, male students in particular in some uh, parts of the country who have boycotted their classes saying that this particular rule is not acceptable until women are allowed uh, into the universities, they will not uh, attend the classes either. Mm. Uh, then of course, uh, there are women uh, and particularly the teaching community in Afghanistan uh, uh, have, have uh, expressed their uh, opinion in public f uh, and that is a, a welcome uh, uh, development uh, in which they have uh, questioned the legality and the need of such uh, uh, policies and uh, uh, some of them also uh, have uh, asked for uh, organizing a movement against this. There is already a movement so on social media and all the ground in Afghanistan uh, uh, about uh, let them uh, something related on the lines of let the girls study study, mm. study. and and I think that movement uh, there is an attempt to kind of uh, uh, make that movement stronger mm. given the nature of Taliban uh, and uh, uh, given its aloofness with the uh, larger uh, uh, world politics in mm. such mm. as such it is difficult to uh, say at this moment whether those movements will be uh, uh, able to mobilize large-scale uh, uh, demonstrations and large-scale movement. Sure. We'll be able to build a large-scale movement mm. and will have any impact mm. on Taliban uh, government changing its rule. Mm. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. All right. Thanks for that update on a tough situation uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, we'll move on to our final story for this episode of Daily Debrief, which comes from the U.S., the House of Representatives Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection that ended with a bloody attack on the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C., voted a couple of days ago to refer former President Donald Trump to the Justice Department to face criminal charges for his role in both fomenting the riots as well as attempting to subvert the results of the 2020 presidential election, which of course Joe Biden won. The committee tasked with understanding Trump's plot to keep Biden out of office made the recommendations after over 18 months of investigation. I spoke a little while earlier to Anish via video conference for more details on this story. So Anish, it's been a couple of days uh, since the committee made its recommendations and asked the Justice Department whether they are interested in taking over and framing charges against Donald Trump. Uh, what do we see happening next? How does the process, where does the process go from here? Well, the legality of this uh, committee's recommendations, or what it calls referrals, uh, is uh, quite limited and uh, to pretty much a symbolic gesture in many cases. Uh, so because the Congress, as, as it works in the United States presidential system, the Congress cannot interfere in the workings of the executive, including the Justice Department. Uh, but uh, these uh, four charges that they or referrals that they have uh, given to the Justice Department uh, can be used as uh, you know proper charges against uh, Donald Trump uh, if the Attorney General is uh, 
you know, uh, convinced that uh, they have enough uh, evidence against him to actually make a conviction, at least in one of those cases. Now, some of the charges uh, uh, can be in the gray area where the evidence can be uh, quite uh, problematic to get, uh, especially in the part where uh, he's been charged with uh, uh, with uh, defrauding the state, defrauding the United States, which is usually and has always been uh, very narrowly defined as uh, financial corruption on the part of an office holder and not necessarily uh, somebody who is trying to uh, undermine the constitutional process. Or any kind of or engage in any kind of political corruption. Uh, so, but there are uh, there is the charge of uh, him actually uh, a uh, trying to undermine the constitutional process to begin with, uh, and also the fact that he has tried to uh, uh, you know actually even uh, uh, you know put a different slate of electoral college votes in, uh, so that can also be uh, you know grounds for conviction later because there is definitely public evidence to it but it is uh, the manner manner in which the supreme court gives gravity to these uh, charges and the evidence that will be presented so we need to wait and see how this is going to work out because uh, the biden administration definitely wants to be careful at this point uh, because if there is a failed conviction mm. or if they fail to convict him mm. to begin with or a failed trial uh, that could actually make him a political martyr he's already made statements where he has called this a partisan witch hunt against him and which in many cases is true considering the fact that the committee members have all uh, including the two republican members in the committee uh, were against uh, donald trump politically speaking uh, so there is definitely you know, a kernel of truth, but the thing is, like the uh, the committee did uh, give extensive uh, uh, attention to uh, to the details that were brought out during the hearings, and that can actually, uh, if uh, and we need to remember that this is not the only uh, thing that was going against Donald Trump. There are multiple investigations against him, including that of financial fraud uh, for of his uh, family's company. Uh, there is also uh, a, an investigation in Georgia where uh, there is uh, where he he and his officials have been accused of trying to undermine the vote counting itself. And then there is definitely uh, a parallel investigation that is already happening under the Department of Justice uh, regarding the uh, January uh, January nine incident. So this definitely is going to, uh, all of these factors can definitely help in uh, the next coming months. But we need to wait and see because there is definitely two more years for the elections to go on. And how this will uh, pan out is something that we need to pay attention to. But, but you, you must have seen in, in your coverage of, of the story and, and reports coming in, Anish, uh, already reactions from various parts of U.S. polity, and and this is like we were saying, the first time a former president has been uh, even faced with potential criminal charges in this kind of a context. Uh, so so uh, so, what has been some of that reaction, and how what sort of impact is it likely to have? Well, uh, a lot of progressive and liberal sections are lauding the committee definitely because of the fact that it has done something unprecedented. Obviously, there have been impeachments and which also includes Donald Trump himself against uh, former presidents and including sitting presidents. But this is a very different case altogether where a person uh, who served as a president is, uh, you know, deemed to be uh, liable to be convicted or prosecuted as uh, a criminal uh, or, or, you know, guilty of federal crimes is something definitely unprecedented in many ways. Uh, it is also going to uh, be new, uh, you know, territory for uh, U.S. Uh, legal and political system because uh, this only opens up possibilities that future presidencies and future congresses can actually, uh, you know, charge uh, sitting or uh, former presidents of, uh, you know, criminal charges that can, actually lead to maybe a long, uh, you know, long drawn prosecution or even a conviction. So we need to wait and see because uh, in many ways, there are plenty of people within the establishment Democrats who are not very keen uh, on taking a risk, actually, yeah, go down that road, taking that risk, uh, because 
obviously you can never uh, be very sure of your own standing in the next few years itself so definitely they want to play it safe uh, but Uh, if a prosecution goes through with enough evidence and if there is a conviction that happens that will be really uh, you know sort of uh, ground shattering in many ways and we need to see if how uh, how these things actually pan out politically because obviously we are looking at a whole host of other factors we're not uh, uh, we are not looking at the base that uh, donald trump already has the right wing base and also the right wing support super majority that he has Uh, installed in the supreme court as well so the political ramifications of all of these things uh, needs to be counted and before we actually to get how this uh, these things are going to have you know wider implications right thanks anisha uh, we we will definitely keep a close eye on developments and see whether you know some of this uh, unprecedented what would be setting a new precedent that would potentially hold even the the highest office in the us Uh, accountable uh, or the people in that position at least uh, the time they are in power uh, so it'll be an interesting one to watch thanks for the update for now uh, that's all we have time for today thanks for joining us that's all we have on this episode of the daily debrief for more on these stories as always we we invite you to head to our website peoplesdispatch.org and of course give us a follow on the social media platform of your choice for regular updates we'll be back again same time same place tomorrow until then stay safe goodbye Thank <laughs> you.